Well, if you watch the channel a lot, you'll know I'm not very good at digging lug, so we've enlisted the help of a real expert, a professional lug digger. Okay, you sure? It's going to show us, hopefully, how to save a bit of money and collect the lugworm ourselves. So by the end of this video, you should have enough confidence to go out, collect some lug using this really simple method, save a bit of money, and as we come into autumn and winter, really give yourself a better chance of catching fish consistently. A fresh supply of lugworm can be invaluable to your fishing. So I hope you give it a go. Well, we've come down on a spring tide. Uh, that in itself is very important. Obviously the spring tide gives us as much difference between the low and the high, and it exposes some of those lug beds uh, that you don't see when the tides are smaller, those smaller neap tides. So it's apparently a very good time for lugworm. Already noticing some washed up razor shells. Not a bad place for bait collection here by the looks of it. You can see already, you go through this mud, pretty solid underneath, but you really need to know where you're walking out here. Best here, you can see a bit more solid around there, otherwise I'm going to be stuck. Ah, now those are cuttle eggs, I think. Beautiful. Lovely evening. <laughs> I'm not going to be good enough to do this on my own, so let's hope I can find him. Just watching your step here, all of a sudden you're going to go from solid ground onto something a bit muddier. So I think I can see him over there in that corner. It's a vast sandbank here. There's probably about four or five different sort of sandbanks. You really do need to know your way back because we're also going to go into darkness and you don't want to be stuck on that muddy patch. So probably out of season. I'm all right in these water shoes, but you're going to need some decent waders if you're going to get into it, I think. Right, let's find out about these lugworm then. See if we can get some. So I'm here with Dave. He's busy getting on now. That's a Copper, copper pipe, a lot of people use stainless steel, but I find with the copper that um, one, you, you get to see the depth of the worms because it, it wears a mark there. And uh, I find I get a lot more suction with copper than I do with stainless steel. Yeah, stainless yeah. steel just seems so smooth. Yeah, so every, every time I'm pushing in, yeah. I, I know roughly that if I go to that depth, I've got a good chance of getting them. Yeah. And then you've just got a brass fitting on there. Yeah, all that is, is just a 22 mil uh, equal T, and then just a stainless steel shaft on there. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 so simple to build. Is there's no hard work to it at all. The hardest probably bit is trying to make the, the, a decent a decent um, silicon seal. Yeah. You know, I've tried What's loads. There, well, just inside there, you've got you obviously got a nut. Oh, okay. a, washer, yeah, like a washer and then obviously I make my own silicon seals yeah um, and obviously you're always experimenting to try and find one that's not too soft and not too hard yeah um, yeah so I say it works that's for good. me stuff you I get from like if you wanted to B&Q yeah. or um, I say with the shaft I, had a, I, I used to worry about trying to get the end tap and died for, for the for the nut yeah but now my friend what he does he, he just welds a, a 10 mil nut on the end and then we just grind it back you can't you can't actually see it but it's inside here um, and then obviously it just makes it a lot easier to work with yeah, and then obviously every now and again we just put a little bit of uh, wash out liquid there just to lubricate the pump but not too much I'm gonna let Dave carry on and you can you can watch him as I talk to you but it's a big time how many did you have yesterday <laughs> Do I have to say? Yeah, well, yeah, it's up to you. <laughs> and you can see there, he's had more worms since I've been here chatting than I. It takes me about an hour to get that. So let's just see this go in. And where are you aiming for there, Dave? I'm trying to go about three, four inches. Sometimes it varies. You can be like here, there, but I, I try and put in. Well, you can see the distance there. That's the cast of the worm he's pointed out. Sometimes he's in a bit closer. can't get the pump in far enough because sometimes the sand's a bit hard underneath. Um, it's just trying to find 
a decent bit of sand sometimes you get sand that's really clay and it's you could be digging all day and not get nothing and then you you move a foot to your right and you hit a nice bit of sand and you can get loads and loads of worms it, it all depends and i mean half it is to do with how you set your pump up a lot of people they set the pumps up at home and they put their hand on the end and they start doing all this and yeah there's loads of pressure and then when they come down the beach they have to adjust the pumps because they, they're just not set up right so it's a case of trial and error when you get down here really Uh, what Dave's been telling me, some of this is clay sand. It all depends on these tides and the wind direction. But he'll get a good section and they'll fly out. Cut. <laughs> That's what we hope, he says. <laughs> to me, this is, this is fascinating because I've always struggled with the lug. Perhaps I'm digging on those sandier beaches, you know, with the fork. If you get it right, they keep on coming. Well, he makes it look so easy, doesn't he? <laughs> so he just invited me to have a go. So either learn something from what I'm doing or just have a little laugh at how useless I am. We'll give it a go, shall we? I hope he's being nice now. He's going to find a spot where he knows there's thousands. Oh, I don't know about that. And he's going to be nice to me. There's not many about, really. <laughs> yeah. that, I'm going to have a go. The idea is to find the cast first. There's there's one in here. Yeah, that's a big pump. There, there. Push there. it in at the same time, then pull down at the same time. I'm a bit jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Let me add them. Those so getting one in two, I'm getting none in five. <laughs> it's going to give me a the X, XT model now. It's a bad thing. We'll get one. Just pull it up, that's it, pull it up smooth. There you go. There you go. Well, he's laughing at me, but to me that's fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> it's a big one as well. Well, that's it. I can go home happy, can't I? <laughs> there you go, look, the size of that. There's always someone with one bigger. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah <man. laughs> present. Uh, so this is the technique Dave's just going to show us. So you see how he's, he's pulled back with his left hand and that's enabled the uh, the yeah, pipe to go right away in. Obviously, just to show you the amount of pressure that I'm actually putting on there. You know, like there's hardly any pressure there at all. It's as as I'm as I'm I can hold that with one finger, and the handle handle should push it into the sand. Really, get a couple of worms, and you start getting a wear mark on the copper pipe. Then you know roughly what kind of depth you're going. You can push it into the sand to that mark. Suck the suck, try and suck the worm out, and yeah, you know, maybe one in three, or one in two, you you'll get the worm. I think you'll find with copper. As well, after like uh, maybe one or two tides, the end starts to burr over, and the, I normally get my, I've got like a, a spanner that I ream it back out with just to get me through the, the tide. And then after a while, we put a, like a little bit of pipe on the end of here to extend that, and then just chop the end of the barrel so you get more life out of the length of copper instead of changing it every time it's worn down an inch, yeah. you know. So you try and make it last as long as possible. I mean, length of copper pipe uh, is like about 10 quid. It's made, a, um, uh, it's, it's made out of a bit of chopping board and then I drilled like a 10 mil hole through there and then that just fits inside here. I think it's a, a 19 mil bit of like plastic with a 10 mil hole drilled in and that, what that does is it stops uh, the handle coming right out, the, right out the pump. Carry that around with me and then obviously you can adjust. Well, that is pretty impressive to me. I know Dave's saying he's, he'll have days where he can have four or five times that amount, mate. Yeah, yeah. So some, it, like tonight, it's there's lots of sand, but no cast. It's it's just one of them nights, really, you know. And obviously, with this easterly wind, it's, it's just changed the digging. Oh, that's right. 
See, this is a, a live bait uh, bucket. Yeah. But what I like about it is it makes it easy to wash the worms out with. So you can get all the sand in it off it. And then just whack them in there. And then let them dry now. Yeah, it shouldn't be there, but it is. It's too many, it's when it's been filled up, I keep dropping it, it keeps cracking them off. If you want to have a look at something that was a real surprise, caught on lug, uh, you can always check this video out here.